people who care about the humanities a lot, I think, are very grateful to you for having written your book, Not For Profit, uh, which made the case for the importance of the humanities in the context of American democratic life. You've recently redone the preface to that, and I wanted to ask you, how are the humanities doing now, in your view, and have things changed substantially since you finished that book and the moment when you took up this new preface? Well, I guess I was pleasantly surprised when I started looking at data. Looking at data not just uh, of majors, which there is some reason to worry about, but data of total enrollments in humanities courses. Big increase in community colleges. That's really interesting to me. And in adult education, a huge upsurge, which is not that surprising because I think humanities um, respond to people's searches for meaning in life. So it's not surprising that people who have been working hard and then they want to pause and they want to think about what life is all about. So those things I found very interesting. I was also very happy that my book has now got company, Fareed Zakaria's excellent book, Michael Roth's excellent book. So I think there are lots of voices now speaking up. What I also learned in the process is how lucky we are in the United States to have the liberal arts system. Because in most countries in the world, if you go to university, you have to decide all English literature or no literature, all philosophy or no philosophy. But since we have a system that has two parts, one part is general education and one part's your major, you can plan. If, you're, if your parents say you got a major in computer science, you can do that. But you can also, and you should, I think, be required to, take general education courses in humanities that prepare you for the larger job of being a good citizen and having a full life. So we better cling to that system because it's what's made the humanities really uh, survive and strengthen themselves in the United States. So how do you think we should cling to it in, in the following way? As I travel around, and I do travel to many colleges and universities, I've, I've sensed a, a, some weakening of that resolve to offer that liberal learning aspiration for higher education. What should we be doing, in your view, to reinforce that way of thinking about the aspirations of higher education in this country? Well, I think there are really three points that you can make. Uh, the one that I make, and I think we should put front and center, is the crucial role of the humanities in preparing people to be good citizens. The role of critical thinking, analyzing arguments, the role of expanding the imagination to come to grips with the way a person experiences life who's quite different from yourself, and the role of history and, well, I'll include the social sciences here, in making it possible to really understand the complicated world, the interlocking world that we're in. So I think that's the first point. But there are other things we can say. Business leaders actually love the humanities because they know that if our business culture is going to continue growing and innovating, to innovate, you don't need skills that you learned yesterday by rote. You need a trained imagination. And so all over the place, I encounter business leaders who are saying STEM is OK, but really, we also need the humanities, and particularly the imaginative aspect. We also need healthy business cultures that have criticism and dissent. Uh, when there's a culture of complacency and go along to get along, then bad things happen and businesses implode and, uh, and uh, whistleblowers are discouraged. So I think that's the second general point, that for economic growth, we need the humanities. Singapore and China, which certainly don't want to encourage democratic citizenship, still are building the humanities. And that's very interesting. They've had major educational reforms. And it is all about building a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. Then the third thing is um, just the search for meaning in life. I mean, life is about a lot more than what you're earning your living at. And people at all ages need to start thinking about a meaningful life. Or else, um, when they get to be in middle age or when they're verging on aging, you know, they'll suddenly realize 
my life is feeling empty, but I haven't even begun to reflect about what life is for and what it means. So I think all those three points can be made. I made the focus on citizenship largely because I think I can reach out to people who don't already care about the humanities, who don't respond to that call for meaning, and they can see that if we want a political culture of informed dissent and civilized argument, we really need the humanities.